The main thing is to have any kind of eruption, we have to have a system that is pressurized at depth, and it's usually gas-saturated magma that is more buoyant than its surroundings that's temporarily held in place in some type of subterranean storage area or magma chamber. But eventually the pressure will build to a point where the container breaks. And when the container breaks, the magma will find its way to the surface, either as a lava-forming eruption, if, for instance, the magma that's erupted allows gases to pass through it rather easily. Although as you increase the silica content of a magma, it becomes more viscous and it's much less passive to gas moving through it. In other words, and the only way to get the gas out of the magma is actually for it to explode. You mentioned magma, you mentioned silica there. So my next question is, what is the composition of volcanic material? I know you have magma and you also have ash, rocks, things like that. What are the composition of these materials? Okay, so typically a a volcano that's erupting in Hawaii will erupt basaltic lava. And that's a lava with about, say, 50% SiO2, maybe 12% iron oxide, maybe uh, 3 or 4% titanium oxide, maybe uh, 12 to uh, 14% aluminum, maybe 6% magnesium oxide, and maybe on the order of 2% sodium and potassium combined. And then the other thing that these magmas have within them is dissolved gaseous compounds like sulfur, chlorine, CO2, and water. When we're talking about uh, the gas coming out of the volcano, how dangerous is this volcanic gas? It can be, for instance, in the case of Hawaii, we have sulfur dioxide being emitted. You also have CO2 that is being emitted. And uh, literally at the fissure vents, the gases are coming out at roughly uh, 2,100 degrees Fahrenheit. So not only are they poisonous, they're at extremely high temperature. So being exposed to them is is not a good idea. Since we've made the connection between uh, volcanic eruption and tectonic activity, in other words, do volcanic eruptions cause earthquakes or vice versa, earthquakes causing volcanic eruptions? There's been only a few cases where you can cite a large magnitude earthquake as having possibly driven a volcano into eruption. And by uh, this, I mean like the 1960 uh, eruption of uh, Cotopaxi volcano. It literally had a magnitude 8 earthquake almost directly below its summit. However, one of the things that has to happen for a volcanic eruption to occur is whenever you break rocks in the subsurface to move magma, you're generating a lot of small earthquakes as, as the magma moves to the surface. And if you have sensitive seismometers distributed, say, within a 15-mile radius of the volcano summit, you'll record all those small magnitude earthquakes. They're usually smaller than magnitude 2. But they tell us something is happening at the subsurface beneath that volcano. And as such, an increase in the number of small magnitude earthquakes beneath a volcano is often a herald that a volcanic eruption, you know, might be coming in the future. Vacancies and resignations at Hawaii's public schools. The head of the teachers' union says it all comes down to money. Our Ashley Nagaoka joins us with more. Ash? Thank you, Kiahi. DOE employment records show more than 400 teachers resigned and left Hawaii during the 2016-2017 school year. That's an increase of 84% in resignations since 2010. That number didn't surprise Carrie Rose, a Wailua Elementary School teacher who is getting ready to move to Colorado for another teaching job. The 34-year-old mother of two says she always dreamed of raising her family here in Hawaii, but on a teacher's salary, she says it's extremely difficult. It's sad that if I want to stay here, I have to choose something other than teaching, and I don't want to choose something other than teaching because that's that's my passion. That's what I'm meant to do. We've got to be able to increase teacher salaries, give more incentives to go into teaching. Otherwise, if this trend continues, there may be a day where we have 2,000 classrooms that don't have teachers. Rosen Lee says he was shocked by the latest DOE numbers. He says teacher vacancies are up 
51 percent from 2011. The number of unlicensed teachers who did not meet state qualifications rose 63 percent, and the number of in-state education program graduates dropped 29 percent. Now, HSTA hopes voters will approve a plan to tax residential investment properties to help fund public education. It will be on the ballot in November. It's opposed by the counties who rely on property taxes and the real estate industry, which says it could raise rents for local residents. side of the island. Um, right now that side's getting a big hit with the VOG and my family's over there, my kids over there, my wife is over there and you know I, I'm here working so it, it feels good to to provide the support and to also think of every this whole island because it's, it's affecting this whole island. What we do is we drive around the community um, basically supporting HPD and um, observing any type of unsafe act, acts or anything like that. We also um, drive around to kind of show the citizens, residents the, that we're here and in support of them. It's important that they know that we're here so that way uh, they, they don't feel alone. They see us driving around and they see soldiers driving around and they see, uh, you know, they don't really get that over here. This is a small isolated area. So when they see that, I believe in their heads, they know they're not forgotten or dismissed or anything like that. Another reason we're out here is to uh, deter you know, acts of crime, acts of hate, looting. You know, a lot of the uh, people, the evacuees that left their homes, they left it, you know, they left everything. Everything's there and a lot of people that think, oh, that's up for grabs, it, it's not. So we gotta kind of sh show that that's what we're here for too. Uh, it's very meaningful um, because you know, we, this is something that we, as guardsmen, this is our priority mission to take care of our home. I guess no words can really describe that. Very little change in the lower east rift zone of the Big Island today as lava continues to flow from Fisher 8 
through Kopoho and into the ocean. Fisher 6, meantime, is starting to weaken. Hawaii County today confirms 577 homes destroyed by lava and earthquakes and 894 people officially registered for assistance with FEMA or the Federal Emergency Management Agency. The Disaster Recovery Center is open daily at Kea'o High School. That's between 8 in the morning and 8 at night. U.S. Geological Survey reports Pele's hair and other volcanic gas fragments that can irritate your skin and eyes are still dusting the ground within a few hundred yards of Fisher 8 and could be carried as far away as Pahoa and Hawaiian Acres. Here's a live look at Halima'uma'u Crater, the summit of Kilauea tonight. The camera filled with the plume of ash. And as explosions keep happening, scientists at Hawaii Volcano Observatory report the crater continues to widen as walls continue to collapse. Hawaii County is urging state lawmakers to hold a special legislative session. The county says it needs further emergency funding assistance due to the ongoing destruction being caused by the Leilani Estates eruption. Council members say more funding will be needed for road repairs, shelters, and a loss of taxable real property. Lava has now covered nearly 6,000 acres and destroyed hundreds of homes. Senate President Ronco Uchi says the legislature is ready to help, but concrete solutions to specific issues must be created before any special session could happen. Volunteers here at New Hope Church have been working since 3 in the morning to prepare hundreds of hot meals for evacuees staying in shelters in both Ka'au and Pohoa. Put a corn in a small one. It's not the time to preach. It's not the time to push church. It's about loving on people. Inside the kitchen at New Hope Church in Hilo, volunteers are whipping up something unusual. When you guys go to the shelter, you're going to realize the need. A hot, home-cooked meal. Likely the first one some eruption evacuees will have eaten in days. These people lost their homes, so they don't get to just walk into their fridge and open it up and take something out and cook whatever they want. They're just eating whatever people are dropping off. That's why every Thursday for the past six weeks, these parishioners have been up before the sun. So we um, open up at 3 a.m. We start prepping at 3.30. Providing comfort through their cooking. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Our volunteers, they come in and they're all joyful. Some people love to cook, some people just want to do dishes. Today, they'll prepare, deliver, and serve close to 1,000 meals. Bless the food that they have prepared with their hearts, God. At the shelter in Ka'au, our cameras focused on the food to respect the privacy of those who were there. People, they're really thankful. As this simple gesture provided a temporary escape, binding this tight-knit community even closer together. As long as it's going on, as long as there's people in the shelter that need food, we're committed